problems during B-12's journey that many may have missed. Rest assured, SpaceX has devised a solution to address the situation. There's no reason to worry. B-12, a key prototype in the Starship program destined for future missions, has now returned to its original departure point. What's next? Our upcoming focus area is the ship capture plan recently unveiled by Elon Musk. This innovative strategy seeks to intercept spacecraft in midair through sophisticated mechanisms, which greatly enhances the vehicle's reusability and minimizes recovery costs. Simultaneously, the investigation into the Vulcan Centaur issue continues, which suggests a difficult outlook. Let's dive into these exciting developments in today's NR Studio episode. The recent capture attempt was highly successful, surpassing many expectations and allaying pre-flight concerns. This success can be attributed to many factors, most notably the refinements made to the blowpipe system and the advanced capabilities of the Raptor engines. Additionally, the lattice fins play a critical role in B-12's navigation. However, understanding the mechanics of the lattice fin system is critical. Understanding the nuances of its operation enhances the overall understanding. The louver fins are carefully designed to provide precise control during re-entry and landing and are therefore critical to the stability of the vehicle. Despite their success, the louver fin system has received little attention, despite having faced several challenges. Of course, please provide the text you would like to rewrite, specifically at T plus 2 minutes and 40 seconds during the separation process, the hot staging technique was implemented. As many may know, this method permits the ship's engines to engage while remaining connected to the booster. While we have thoroughly examined the significance of hot staging, it seems that this time, it has notably affected the grid fin. As the engines ignited, the ensuing flow of flames appeared to influence the grid fin, a fact corroborated by camera perspectives from both the booster and the ship. The potential ramifications of this impact are considerable as any damage to the grid fins could jeopardize both flight safety and performance. Fortunately, this issue did not hinder B-12's subsequent journey as the grid fins continued to navigate adeptly, contributing to a successful landing and making history. Nonetheless, I contend that SpaceX ought to contemplate an upgrade to this system. Enhancing the separation mechanism could serve to mitigate any potential adverse effects on the grid fin and other associated systems. Although it constitutes merely a component of the booster, SpaceX is striving for complete reusability. It is likely that the company would prefer to avoid the need for replacing grid fins after every flight. As the flight reached its conclusion, the matters pertaining to B-12, including those associated with the grid fin, are set to undergo thorough analysis in the near future. Two days following its return, B-12 was transported back to its original location at the production site. According to the road closure schedule, on the morning of October 15th, B-12 was carefully lifted by a chopstick from the OLM and positioned onto the booster transport stand, which had been brought to the site earlier. This process consumed more than two hours. Shortly thereafter, B-12 commenced its journey from the launch site, heading back to the production facility. By the afternoon, it had entered Megabay. Upon arrival at Megabay, the vehicle will be subjected to a detailed analysis to identify any issues that may have arisen during the flight, including potential damage to the shine, grid fin, and engine components. This data will be essential for SpaceX as it seeks to enhance future prototypes. The status of B-12's refurbishment remains uncertain. Previously, I inquired with everyone regarding the potential for a reflight of B-12. Although there is a considerable eagerness to witness its return to the skies, the specifications for the upcoming flight have been firmly established, and the V-2 has already been manufactured. This significantly diminishes the likelihood of a B-12 launch in the future. Instead, it could represent a significant symbol in the rocket garden, akin to S-20 or Starhopper, due to its invaluable contributions to the program. In light of recent developments, SpaceX has unveiled an impressive glimpse of the Raptor engines and what a breathtaking sight it is to behold. When Musk alluded to the warping of the Raptor nozzles, I couldn't help but feel a wave of concern. However, the recent images reveal that the engine's condition is far better than I had expected. The warping seems to be evident in one of the three inner engines, as well as in one of the engines located in the outer ring, assuming my observations are accurate. 
The majority of the engines appear to be in excellent condition, and I can assert with confidence that they adhere to the standards for full reusability. Certainly, here's a more polished version of your text. While SpaceX will still need to evaluate the specific issues at hand, I remain optimistic about this initial move towards full reusability. The results thus far have been encouraging. Let us eagerly anticipate their upcoming decisions. Next, let's delve into the noteworthy announcement that Musk recently made concerning his ambitious plan to capture the ship. During the most recent flight, S-30 showcased enhanced re-entry capabilities compared to its predecessor. Regrettably, it met a disastrous end upon making contact with the water, resulting in an explosion. This prompts an intriguing question. Will SpaceX be able to successfully capture the ship in the near future? Recently, Musk expressed optimism, stating that we may very well catch the ship early next year. This time frame appears to be a prudent opportunity for SpaceX to optimize its systems. The vessel from Flight 5 demonstrated remarkable advancement. The re-entry phase was particularly striking. Furthermore, the flap system remained safeguarded throughout the majority of the flight, underscoring the efficacy of the heat shield enhancements. Furthermore, this flight reaped the advantages of stellar support, offering a more enriched experience compared to its predecessor. Following the triumph of Flight 5, many, myself included, began to speculate that the subsequent flight might occur this year. However, in light of Musk's revelation, it may be necessary to reevaluate this perspective. There are two possibilities. Firstly, SpaceX may move forward with Flight 6 this year, adhering to the same protocol as Flight 5, which implies that the ship would once again land in the ocean. Should any changes arise, they will likely pertain to the landing site, potentially transitioning to the Pacific in anticipation of a subsequent recovery attempt, possibly during Flight 7. The second option would be to try and intercept the ship during Flight 6. However, this approach would likely postpone the flight until next year, ultimately leading to no further flights this year. These options pose challenges that may not conform to our expectations. Should SpaceX prioritize a rapid launch or concentrate on executing a complete catch? In my view, the first option appears more pragmatic as it would enable SpaceX to improve the reliability of the ship's landing. We welcome your feedback. Please share your thoughts by responding with either one or two in the comments below. Your feedback is invaluable as it enables us to gain insight into the community's perspective on these developments. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Regardless of the chosen path, we are nearing a significant milestone where both stages of the Starship may be successfully captured. This will represent a groundbreaking milestone as it signifies the first instance of a rocket being entirely recovered and repurposed. Reaching this milestone will establish a vital cornerstone for SpaceX, paving the way for future initiatives, including the launch of payloads, the development of a refueling system, the production of Starship HLS, and preparations for the Artemis and Mars missions. As we gaze into the future, the competitive dynamics of the aerospace industry are evolving, with SpaceX poised to potentially take the lead. This transformation heralds a new era of innovation and exploration. As we conclude our discussion on Starship, let's redirect our focus to the matter concerning the Vulcan Centaur. Recently, during a flight, Vulcan's solid rocket booster, SRB, experienced an explosion just 35 seconds after liftoff. The nozzle's detachment, while concerning, ultimately did not detrimentally influence the overall flight outcome. However, as per disclosures from ULA, this incident did have a temporary effect on flight performance. During the International Astronautical Congress on October 14th, ULA CEO Tori Bruno remarked that the overall impact was a mere fraction, less than 2%, of the booster's total impulse. He further emphasized that the thrust we achieved from that point was not as robust as we would have preferred. The engineers at ULA are actively engaged in an analysis to gain deeper insights into the incident. This situation raises significant concerns regarding Vulcan's prospects for securing Space Force launch certification. Sure, please provide the text you'd like me to rewrite, and I'll be happy to assist you. Certification is critical as it ensures that the rocket meets safety and performance standards critical to national security missions. The SIRTH-2 mission is the second of two Vulcan launches critical to obtaining this critical certification, which in turn is critical to national security operations. Prior to the SIRTH-2 incident, 
ULA had set its sights on obtaining this certification in order to conduct its first two national security launches by the end of the year. Given the current circumstances, Tori Bruno has raised concerns about the timeline for obtaining launch certification, a delay that could severely impact the company's goals. It is important to note that ULA is actively seeking certification for CERT-2 in order to facilitate the launch of two delayed missions this year. USSF-106 and USSF-87. Furthermore, over 20 additional missions are scheduled for the next two years. A delay or failure to obtain these certifications could potentially plunge the company into a major crisis. One of the most pressing concerns is the potential financial crisis that is looming, which could ultimately result in ULA being acquired by a new owner. Recently, Sierra Space has positioned itself as a potential buyer. However, their expertise does not extend to rocket development, which could potentially hurt Vulcan's prospects. This would be an embarrassing situation for ULA, especially given its statements about competing with SpaceX. The scenario reflects ULA's challenges in maintaining its momentum in the face of SpaceX's achievements. As Starship Flight 5 reaches a major milestone, the competitive landscape may have shifted in SpaceX's favor. In the military and government payload launch space, SpaceX has increasingly secured a share of ULA's contracts. This shift reflects the increasing competitiveness and innovation in the aerospace industry. If ULA cannot recover from this incident, the company may be forced to rethink its position in the industry. In conclusion, the space race is entering a new era. As SpaceX and ULA grapple with these challenges, it will be interesting to see how their trajectories diverge and the subsequent impact on future missions. Stay tuned for more updates. See you in the next episode.